Ed, when you see yields pull back again as they have today and, and the, uh, the, the corresponding sector performance, does it alter whether you want to have cyclical or growth exposure for the rest of this year? I don't think one day is going to change the trend as far as uh, our sector exposure. Uh, the big story here is probably more about earnings growth, and the earnings growth is going to come from those cyclical sectors. So those are the areas we like for now. Interest rates would be an, an added uh, tailwind if we would get a steeper yield curve for, for the cyclical sectors. But that's probably more symptomatic of why you'd want to be in the cyclicals rather than the reason for being in them. But Delano, there's a real debate right now. You were saying last hour that growth looks good if, if you think the Fed is going to stay on hold, if we keep getting jobs numbers that are underwhelming like this. Yes, yeah, Sarah, and that, that's exactly right. If you believe, you know, the Fed's going to stick with their mandate um, and we're going to see, you know, job numbers that are not fully um, fully showing recovery and not fully showing where the Fed would like to see, then, then you would want to stick with some of the growth names who have been beaten down, you know, year to date. And obviously, as Mike was explaining, they've, they've kind of had some traction here in the last couple of weeks. Um, and, you know, ironically, some of the, some of the growth names were, had a, a great value. Um, and so if you're looking at that, you'd want to kind of have been adding to your growth names that you really believe in and maybe sticking them out because as we look at it a couple quarters on the line there's some great great value in some of these growth names mike uh, vix uh, pulling back today showing some comments i guess because of the meme stock coming down but helps us uh, as we do approach those record closes again yeah, yeah it definitely confirms at least what's going on with the market i would also point out that people who watch kind of the anticipated level of the VIX. So, you know, you can buy VIX futures. VIX itself is just a statistic. It's not actually something you own. Uh, but the futures are kind of shaped in a certain way where basically it shows you the market is in a pretty good, uh, relatively comfortable position, not a lot of stress building up. So that's all to the net positive, even though, you know, 16 and a half arguably uh, would otherwise be lower uh, than that right now, given the fact we've been near or at highs for, for months. Ed, you said you were sticking with the cyclical groups and looking toward improvement in earnings. Which, which sectors in particular? Uh, I think the three are probably most promising here are uh, industrials, materials, and energy. And I'd throw in uh, financials as well. Uh, now, I think there's another aspect, too, when you talk about growth versus value. I think over the last year, when we say value, we're really thinking about those cyclical value sectors. There's a whole group of defensive value sectors like utilities that have really been lost here. And they do very poorly during the first year of a bull market because they're low beta. But if the pace of gains of the market slows, which usually happens in the second year of a bull market, then those low beta value sectors may actually do well um, in the second year. So what we could see would be another segment of value uh, starting to help rather than being a hindrance to that broad growth versus value story. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.